So before we talk about Newton's second law of motion, let's recall his first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia. So the law of inertia states that if no net force acts on our object, that object will remain in its current state of motion. But what happens if a net force does in fact act on our object? Well, then our object's motion will somehow begin to change. And this is exactly what the second law states. It gives us a relationship between force, between net force and motion. So let's suppose we have a box that lies on a horizontal table. Now, what happens if I apply net force along the x-axis in the positive direction? And let's make the assumption that the magnitude of this net force is greater than the frictional force pulling backwards. Well, now we have a net force pointing in this direction, and that means our object will begin to move. It will begin to experience motion. So its velocity will begin to increase in this direction along the x-axis. Now recall that the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is actually acceleration. And so that means this object will begin to accelerate. So object's velocity will change and since rate of change of velocity is acceleration, the object is said to be accelerating. So what exactly does the second law of motion state? Well, the second law of motion states the following. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to net force and inversely proportional to mass. So this gives the following formula. The net force acting on our object is equal to mass times acceleration. So this symbol simply means summation. And this simply means that we're taking the sum of all the vector forces acting on our object. So for example, if we have a three-dimensional vector, recall that this three-dimensional vector can be broken down into three different components. We have the fx, the component along the x-axis, one component along the y-axis, and the third component is along the z-axis. So, what exactly does this state? Well, it states that if we have a constant net force acting on our object, the more mass our object has, the less acceleration it will experience. And that makes sense because, by definition, the more mass an object has, the greater amount of inertia it has, and so the greater its resistance, its tendency to resist change, resist motion. And so that means more mass with the same constant force means we have less acceleration, as we'll see in just a moment. So, force can now be defined in terms of acceleration. So, force is an action that is capable of causing acceleration. So let's look at our example. Let's find the force required to accelerate a 1,000 kilogram car and a 10,000 kilogram car to 10 meters per second squared along one direction. So let's suppose we have the following car that has a mass of 1,000 kilograms and we have another car that has a mass of 10,000 kilograms. We want to find how much more force we require to accelerate this more massive car to the same exact acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. So, we use this formula, so we have forces acting along one direction, we neglect friction, and so we have force equals 1,000 kilograms times 10, gives us 10,000 newtons, and force equals 10,000 kilograms times 10, so 100,000 newtons. So it takes 10 times more force to accelerate this more massive car to the same exact acceleration.